Welcome to ICCG's Close-Up, sponsored by Round World Solutions, where Fortune 1000 CXOs share their enterprise strategies for competing and winning in the global economy. Our wide-ranging topics include big data, governance, supply chain analytics, enterprise mobility, and portfolio management. The goal of our interviews is to understand the CXO's area of focus, the challenges associated with that area, and their plans for confronting those challenges. The benefit to our participants is the creation of a virtual CXO knowledge pool, so CXOs can learn from each other and not have to reinvent the wheel. I'm your host, Ellis Booker. Hello and welcome to ICCG's Close Up. I'm your moderator, Ellis Booker. Today we're delighted to have Mark Zecca with us. Mark is the Transformation Officer at Schneider Electric North America. Hello, Mark. Hey, how you doing, Ellis? And helping me ask questions, we have Steve Winstead, a Round World Solutions partner. Hello, Steve. Hello, Ellis. Uh, great to be here. Um, I'm going to, we're going to try this again, guys, because I forgot the sponsorship item. So we're just going to go again. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to ICCG's Close Up, sponsored by Round World Solutions. I'm your moderator, Ellis Booker. Today, I'm delighted to say that we have Mark Zecca, the Transformation Officer at Schneider Electric North America, as our panelist. Hello, Mark. Hi, how you doing, Alice? Great. And helping me ask questions, we have Steve Winstead. Steve is a Round World Solutions partner. Hello, Steve. Hello, Ellis. Uh, great to be here. All right. Mark, um, we want to start with big data. Can you explain to us how big data and advanced analytics can help a, uh, an organization such as yours? Certainly. Uh, big data is one of the um, assets that a company actually creates. Many companies don't even realize that they, they create this, this data on an ongoing basis, partially through the relationship with their customers, partially through their own internal relationships, and also the relationships they establish within their industry. And together, that information can come together and create uh, new data, or at least new information, that will help the business make decisions not only about its marketplace, but about its products, how it deals with its customers, and certainly about its own internal operations. So today, a company really can't exist, uh, at least not successfully, without giving some credence and some uh, applicability to big data. I know Steve had a, a follow-up for you about the big data initiatives. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, yes, Mark. Uh, what kind of steps are you taking to, to make sure that uh, your big data initiatives are truly bringing benefits back to the business? Well, we have uh, several uh, activities going on that are both, I would say, local or regional uh, within North America, but also within our uh, international or global environment. So let me start with the global. Uh, one of the things that we recognized uh, early on, and this was uh, as a result of not only our customer meeting, but by watching the industry change around us, was that we didn't have the information to make decisions about both customer interactions and also about our products and our services. So from a uh, global pers perspective, we uh, went forward and, and, and sought the different sources of data um, across our many different enterprises. Uh, Schneider is a multi-billion dollar uh, international organization and it has many locations and many sources in which to tap, in which to understand and get data that will help us make those decisions. So we established a, a global uh, activity that uh, not only identified various sources around the international environment but also allowed us to kind of bring in the enterprise, if you will, and with that, we applied various analytic tools 
as well as decision-making tools, ETL tools, and display and dashboard tools to give a full range of applicability to uh, getting that information and providing decision-making opportunities for the business. At the regional level, we also realized that um, there were many demands on decision-making capabilities uh, amongst our, our many independent businesses as well as our regional operations. And within those operations, uh, there had already been lots of, um, how would you say, shadow types of activities that were going on. In order to not only honor those activities, but also to kind of connect with those sources, uh, the international or global environment attempted to touch uh, many of these uh, shadow uh, data actuations as well as their operational uh, areas and then together help them either mature their uh, business intelligence capability or uh, actually help them find those tools to help regionally. So together we kind of give a regional as well as full enterprise level to data and the decision making that can come from it. Mark, given the, uh, the global footprint of Schneider Electric um, and the, the regional uh, units uh, working as well, what's the hardest lesson you guys learned about um, uh, synchronizing, coordinating all those uh, different sources as you mentioned? Certainly as a large company, and, and I'm sure that many large companies face this, there's this tendency to go immediately to a governance uh, model uh, with regards to data. Not, not the governance model to uh, the operation around the data, but the data itself. So many of us will have a tendency to be almost uh, database oriented. In other words, we want to structure the data ahead of time. We want to make sure it's consistent. We want to filter it. And we want to get that all done before we put it in a repository. This is probably the worst thing you can do. The data is there to tell you things. It's there to teach you. It's there to give you information, not for you to filter it and, in a sense, kind of cut it short uh, instead of allowing it to tell you many things. So the first thing that we found is that we were restricting our own ability to understand what the data had to tell us. If the data doesn't tell you something you don't already know, then you're really getting value out of it. But if you filter the data or you try to structure it or architect it ahead of time, it will only tell you what you already knew and right. what you already structured it to be. So there's no discovery if, if you've already uh, uh, rationalized, uh, normalized all the data. That's uh, correct. There's no yeah. wow factor and, and there is no um, answer to questions that you didn't have already. Fascinating. You mentioned governance a second ago, so I'd like to follow up on that. Um, Clearly, there there is a role for governance and data quality. Can you can you speak to at the point at which you were ready to do that? How you proceeded? Absolutely. So governance isn't about setting up rules or trying to architect uh, you know fields and data streams. Uh, governance is about how you use and you keep and you repose and you search for data, um, because data then becomes information. Once the information is uh, converted, if you will. What do you do with that information? How important is it? What kind of security do you need around it? Where does what levels does it, it, it find itself in? All these are governance questions, but they're governance questions that are probably less architectural and more at atmospheric. Mm -hmm. So, in being able to develop a governance uh, plan as well as a, a series of, of governance activities around it, you you kind of pull up the microscope a little bit instead of being too focused on structure but really focused on utility and, and placement. I know, uh, Steve, you're our uh, expert in governance questions. Um, do you have a follow-up for, uh, yeah. for Mark? Yes, it would be interesting, Mark, to know if you had any real uh, challenges that you saw in terms of uh, uh, getting the verified and validated data, you know, lessons learned, uh, you know, some advice you could maybe give us based on your experience. Certainly, one of the things that were uh, and still do uh, um, uh, intrigue us is our ability to somehow produce lots of overlapping data and being able to, uh, in fact, one of the things you, you, you find out in engineering school, I think Engineering 101 is they tell you never design systems that require synchronization. 
and yet at the same time overlapping data requires just that, it's synchronization. It's being able to know what you've already um, acquired and trying not to duplicate it just under some other different name or source. In normal um, database management, you would already use the structure of that database to keep yourself from overlapping data. But in warehouse management, where you're bringing in multiple sources, you have to figure out what you already have and how you can spin it, how you can use it, but also how you don't duplicate it and then create, uh, in a sense, another set of false data because of that overlap. So one of the biggest challenges we found was keeping the, um, uh, the overlap of the data from finding itself into the warehouse and therefore finding it into the intelligence information that uh, is a, an outcome of that. Great. Um, before we let you go, Mark, uh, we do want to ask you about your top two priorities for, for 2015. Can you speak to that? Certainly. One of the top priorities at Schneider is how do we better serve our customer? And, and to better serve the customer, we have to know the customer, we have to know their environment, we have to know how our products interface with them, what their particular demands are, what kind of marketplace they exist in, and, and what kind of industry um, is, is, uh, is moving forward that they happen to be uh, in place in. And so these elements all are important aspects of uh, hundreds, actually thousands of our customers, and being able to know those things, being able to have the intelligence there to, um, uh, first of all, know and then make decisions associated both with our products and our services in that customer environment are absolutely essential to us. So we have to get that. And, and in the past, we simply haven't had that. Now we have the opportunity of not only collecting that data, but uh, creating information and intelligence associated with that and then making decisions uh, uh, associated with that information. I would say the second priority we have is, is really more internally facing. How do we use intelligence for the business? How do we not only grow the business, but make the business smarter, harder, more responsive? How do we change our environment and, and how our frameworks are uh, built uh, with now this new data, this new intelligence that uh, we've been faced with? Making that organizational and framework change for the business, as well as knowing our customers and their demands both on our products and services are probably the two most important things we have facing us in the coming years. Mark, thank you so much for the uh, interesting and very informative answers. That's all the time we have for today's ICCG close-up. If you'd like to watch uh, additional interviews with CXOs, um, join the conversation or um, uh, participate as a panelist, please visit our website at iccgusa.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Cunningham, Senior Director, Solutions and Delivery for Round World Solutions, the experts in integrated governance with project execution. Our unique 360 degree view enables us to give CXOs a comprehensive view of where they are today, where they would like to be, and delivers a powerful change management structure to ensure they accomplish their goals. ICCG Close Up is an interview panel where CXOs share their views on big data, governance, and their most pressing issues. At the conclusion of the interviews, we will be compiling the results into an industry and issue-specific report to share with all of the interviewees, emphasizing common interests and future plans associated with those interests across industries. The benefits to our participating CXOs are the creation of a virtual CXO interactive knowledge base, highly scaled shared resources, and the ability to learn from each other without having to reinvent the wheel. Thank you for watching ICCG's Close Up, sponsored by Round World Solutions. For more information about our CXO interview panels or to join the conversation, please visit us at www.roundworldsolutions.com. Thank you. Thank you.